OpenAI is launching their AI agent feature in early 2025, according to a recent press release. This means a huge shift in how you're gonna operate your business and use AI in general. Here, I'm gonna explain why and how. The fact is, AI agents are the dream of what we wanted computers to do since we started thinking of computers in the 1950s. If you look at old sci-fi, actually any sci-fi, there's nobody really sitting on computers doing a lot of actual work. Most of the time, especially in the older movies, you're simply talking to a computer that's then executing tasks. This is how we always wanted computers to operate, and AI agents are the realization of this thing that we've always wanted happening, and it's going to start coming very very soon in 2025. Now, AI agents already exist. You could actually build an AI agent uh, using any of the different software platforms. Uh, Anthropic or Claude actually has one that's really effective. Uh, it takes a little bit of technical work to get working, though. And the reason is pretty simple. It has to live on your computer, which means that your computer has to run specific software and you have to install specific parameters so it can operate the device itself because that's what AI agents actually do. Rather than, say, ChatGPT, where you go in, you write a prompt and it delivers an answer with AI agents, what you could do is set a task or a list of tasks and it'll simply execute those tasks one over the other. My ideal scenario is we start training these AI agents by simply having them record a process that we're doing and then it builds the or redoes the process using AI to you know regenerate the task every single time or regenerate the result every single time. Now, uh, some of them kind of do this, uh, but it's pretty difficult. It's a little clunky. And again, you do have to be semi tech technical to actually install the thing in the first place. What OpenAI is doing now is going to install AI agents within the app that lives on your device. This means that you don't have to do any of the technical requirements and you can actually get into what you've actually always wanted, which is a piece of software, in this case AI, that is going to access multiple tools and then deliver something. So if you use an example, say I wrote a new article and uh, you know, and this is something that you probably use Zapier for, to you know, coordinate, but you say, okay, I posted a new article on my WordPress website. Uh, when that happens, I want it to be sent over to Claude and I want it to write uh, you know, a copy for my email about this new article in order to promote it to my newsletter list. Then I want it to generate a picture using this Canva template and I want it to replace the picture with something more relevant to you know, the content. So I want you to generate that using MidJourney and this prompt. Then I want you to take that, export it into a JPEG, put it into you know my MailChimp, and then I want you to send the email out to these specific groups. Now, what I just described is something that marketers do every single day, and it you know it is a lot of steps. It takes oh let me get all these things done. Now, just imagine all you do is publish the article, and then you say send the email, and all those other tasks just happen your life would be how much easier? How many more articles would you write? How much more time would you spend on producing that article if you knew that everything else was taken care of? And so that's really the, the beauty of AI agents and AI in general is these tasks that would take us just this manual clicking and copy and pasting and, and setting parameters and specs and all that kind of junk doesn't have anything to do with the actual content or the audience actually, you know, reading your content. Uh, it just has to do with these steps you have to take to make those two things happen. So uh, it's, it's a dream. <laughs> it's what we've always wanted. Now, the problem with AI agents and specifically ChatGPT's AI agent is there's so many users, which means that all of the struggling company, they're not struggling, but you know, startups uh, that have these AI applications might be doing something that ChatGPT, which already has the biggest user base of any AI platform already uh, is going to add that feature. So all the automations that we've always wanted to do. Now, there's still plenty of work to do. And a lot of people don't understand the, the creation of processes in the first place. So there's tons of works for, for professionals to actually implement these things into companies. But you know, your average company isn't going to want to actually pay for, uh, you know, having this set up for them because, you know, if your, your students could, or your employees could actually do it, then there you go. And that's how easy I'd imagine this is going to be. So it could be extremely disruptive on, uh, AI platform use. Uh, because again, if you could just talk to the one application, it does a bunch of things, or even if it's accessing other AI, you're going to end up back at chat GPT more and more, and they're just going to keep on adding features and removing the need to go anywhere 
everywhere, which is going to limit, you know, reduce their processing, uh, you know, need and their interaction with these other platforms, which will probably start charging them. So you can see how it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big situation, <laughs> but this is really what we always wanted from AI. So, uh, I personally, I'm very excited about it. Uh, I think everybody should be very excited about it because what you'll realize when these things start to come into action and people start using them is you've been using a lot of time just clicking things and going places and, and moving data around. And that's what we call robot work. So it's not work we should be doing. We just want to say, hey, machine, uh, I need to meet with my friend Jason. So I want you to you know coordinate with his schedule. And if he says yes to, to meeting in the next week, find some place and time and stuff we could meet. And then it just set it up. That's what we want to do with machines. We don't want to go through the process of sending 50 messages. And honestly, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the load on the system, this is going to be much better too, because instead of, you know, having to actually send all these messages back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it'll just get done automatically. So it'll actually be way more efficient than things currently are. And as you know, the processing power comes online with the new data centers that they're building, it's going to be very helpful. So, uh, AI agents, uh, start to understand them. We'll be creating some more content on how they work. Uh, but if you just want to start thinking like about your processes, I think that's the best way to prepare, you know, start thinking, okay, what's the most efficient way I could do this? Because the more efficient you make you doing it, the more efficient you're going to be able to train the machine to do it. Now, the machine's probably going to suggest things, but in the meantime, you're preparing and you're getting all your ducks in a row. And all of a sudden your workload's going to go from a hundred hours a week to 10 hours a week. Like that's, that's the, the potential uh, impact. And then you can also start applying it to like your employees impact and you get exponential savings on everything. It's going to be interesting. Uh, but you know, you could get prepared. So start working towards it and, uh, you definitely won't regret it because this is going to be the, probably the biggest game changer since AI initially got popular is going to be this application and it's going to be huge. So get ready. Oh,